So hey everybody, my name is Andrew Sedler and I'm a machine learning PhD student at Georgia Tech advised by uh, Chetan Pandaranath. Um, so today I'll be showing you some of our recent work on a framework for training robust models of single trial neural population dynamics. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with LFADS, um, you know that it takes a lot to explain LFADS. So like explaining auto LFADS is going to be even more difficult. So uh, just bear with me. Hopefully we'll get through it. Um, so um, just to orient you all, first I'm going to go talk about the original LFADS model and some of its limitations in practice. Um, then I'll give you an overview of auto LFADS and make some initial claims about the benefits of using it. And finally, I'll go through our results on four very different data sets to give you a sense of the capabilities of the framework. So in recent years, many new technologies have emerged that are giving us new ways to study the brain. Um, technologies like neuropixels allow monitoring of hundreds to thousands of neurons in a wide variety of brain areas. Uh, compact and robust recording technologies are also allowing us to capture data during increasingly complex, even natural behaviors. On the modeling side, we have new ways of uncovering single trial neural activity and understanding population level dynamics. However, the sheer volume and dynamical complexity of this data is a critical barrier to uncovering and interpreting uh, these dynamics. Thus, we need a more general, flexible, and efficient modeling framework uh, to complement these technologies. Um, so latent factors analysis via dynamical systems, or LFADS for short, is a very effective deep learning model that represents neural activity as the output of a latent dynamical system, which we call the generator. According to the dynamical systems framework, the generator's state is determined by its previous state and any time varying inputs. LFADS takes segments of spiking data as inputs and produces estimates of the Poisson rates underlying the observed spikes. It infers latent population dynamics, estimates single trial firing rates, and models large numbers of neurons, and requires no behavioral data. As you might have noticed, LFADS already has many characteristics of a generalized neural dynamics model. So what's missing? The problem is that it's in its original form, LFADS is not easily generalized across data sets. Like most deep learning models, LFADS has many regularization hyperparameters whose optimal values are impossible to know a priori and may be drastically different for different data sets. For most other models, this would be addressed by training on the order of 100 models with random hyperparameter values and then choosing the one that achieved the lowest validation loss. However, using synthetic data with known firing rates, We've shown that LFADS models with the best validation loss are actually overfit to spikes, resulting in noisy representations that don't reflect the underlying firing rates. So in practice, we don't have true firing rates. So identifying high performing models on real data requires following the random search with, random, with supervised evaluation using indirect measures of model quality. For example, PSTH reconstruction or behavioral decoding. This not only requires additional behavioral data, but also biases model selection towards the metric rather than the true objective of modeling neural activity. Thus, the key problems with applying the original version of LFADS to a variety of data sets are the computational expense of the random search and the unreliability of the negative log likelihood as a measure of model quality. So auto LFADS solves these key problems with two complementary innovations. The first is a novel regularization technique called coordinated dropout, which prevents overfitting to spikes, allowing us to simply select high performing models by negative log likelihood rather than behaviorally biased supervision metrics. The second is our use of an efficient hyperparameter search algorithm called population based training to discover optimal hyperparameter schedules. So in the rest of this talk, I'll illustrate how Ottawa LFADS surpasses LFADS in four key ways. First, it infers higher quality representations of neural activity. Second, it finds high performing models much more efficiently. Third, it is unsupervised with respect to behavioral data and brain area. And finally, it produces generalizable dynamics models on condition subsets and small data sets. In the subsequent slides, I'll indicate which of these categories each experiment falls under in the bottom left corner. 
So in our analyses, we applied auto LFADs out of the box to four non-human primate data sets, which I'll describe briefly here. The first data set was the maze data set used in the original LFADs paper, which included intracortical recordings from M1 hand and hand kinematics during reaches through 108 different maze configurations. The second data set, the random target task, had similar recordings during a self-paced sequential reaching task between random elements in a grid. The third data set um, included recordings from somatosensory area two and hand kinematics during either mechanical perturbations or voluntary movements of the hand. The final data set was recorded from the dorsomedial frontal cortex, a cognitive area, as the monkey was presented with two, st two stimuli separated by a time interval, and then attempted to reproduce that interval by waiting before initiating a movement. On subsequent slides, I'll use the task names and icons to indicate the data sets corresponding to each result. So we trained auto LFADs out of the box, along with about 100 LFADs models with random hyperparameters across a reasonable range for each data set. We then calculated PSTHs for smooth spikes, auto LFADs rates, and LFADs rates by averaging across trials, and we calculated the coefficient of determination between empirical and modeled PSTHs. These plots show that auto LFADs retains features of empirical PSTHs better than any random search model for all stereotype tasks in these three very different brain areas, from a motor area on the left to a sensory area in the middle and a cognitive area on the right. So in addition to the performance gain, it's important to note that these random searches used three times the computational resources for training and required supervised evaluation in order to select the best model. So these results demonstrate the accuracy, efficiency, and unsupervised nature of the auto LFADS framework. Similarly, when we evaluated models based on linear decoding of hand velocity for these three um, hand velocity tasks, we found that auto LFADs consistently outperformed the best random search model for all three kinematic tasks in motor and sensory areas without manual adjustment for individual tasks. Again, note that LFADs or auto LFADs used three times less computation for training and found a high performing model without a supervision signal. One challenge in working with neuroscientific data is that large data sets are hard to come by. Most data sets are fairly small by machine learning standards. To evaluate the performance of auto LFADs on small data sets, we divided the maze data sets almost 2,300 trials into smaller subsets with 20, 10, and 5% of the original data. We trained auto LFADs models along with manually tuned LFADs models on these subsets and evaluated linear cursor velocity decoding performance from their resulting representations. We found that even with only 10% of the data, auto LFADs models were able to maintain high decoding performance while performance dropped significantly for manually tuned models. Given that LFADs models population dynamics, another reasonable question to ask is how well the inferred dynamics can explain conditions that aren't found in a given data set. To test this, we held out condition subsets in the maze task while controlling for data set size. We trained auto LFADs and manually tuned models on the subset, then froze the generators and trained only the encoding models for the full data set. Linear cursor velocity decoding for, from the resulting inferred rates showed that auto LFADs infers generalizable dynamics even when trained on only one or two conditions, while performance in manually tuned models tends to decline more quickly. Normally, the input samples for LFADs are entire trials, but they don't necessarily need to be. Because the random target task was self-paced, the trials for this task had various lengths ranging from one second to almost four seconds. Rather than using whole trials as input samples for auto LFADs, we generated samples by chopping the continuous data into fixed length overlapping segments without regard for trial boundaries. After training, we reassembled the rates and broke them back up into trials. And we reduced dimensionality to the first three principal components. Here, we color the neural trajectories by reach angle to show that auto LFADs discovered trajectories that contained information about reach direction, despite having no information about the notion of a trial during training. This shows that auto LFADs requires virtually no knowledge outside of neural data to infer meaningful representations. 
So in sensory areas like area two, it's common to fit behavior to neural activity using a behavioral encoding model. Here we show that the rates inferred by auto LFADs explain the observed spikes much better than a GLM for all neurons across two recording sessions. This shows us that auto LFADs is capturing a lot of information that isn't contained in the behavioral data. Again, I wanna emphasize that auto LFADs out of the box was successful, highly successful in modeling a highly input driven brain area with very different statistical and dynamical properties from the motor cortex. In the cognitive timing task, um, it's been shown that the neural speed in DMFC during the produced interval is negatively correlated with the length of the produced interval. Neural speed, analogous to kinematic speed, is defined as the norm of the change in firing rates over time. We computed neural speed for neural representations obtained by smoothing, GPFA, random search, and auto LFADs. Auto LFADs reveals this negative correlation better than nearly all other methods, but is comparable with the best LFADs model from the random search. However, recall that finding the best LFADs model requires extra computation and supervision data. To drive this point home again, I want to emphasize that we applied auto LFADs out of the box to a new brain area whose activity depends on the confluence of both inputs and internal dynamics, and we're able to achieve better results from the PSTH reconstruction decoding and decoding than any other method. All right, one more minute. Thanks. So to conclude, we've shown that auto LFADs greatly enhances the accuracy, efficiency, and generalizability of LFADs, while also reducing the reliance on supervision signals and manual input. We were able to find the best performing models with high computational efficiency, perform model selection using only neural data, apply the model out of the box on motor, sensory, and cognitive areas, generalize well to unseen conditions, perform well on small data sets, and model data without regard to trial boundaries. So we believe that by freeing researchers from the often tedious problem of hyperparameter optimization, this technique will enable the study of dynamics of neural populations in a wider variety of brain areas and for a wider variety of behaviors. So I'd like to thank all my collaborators for all their hard work on this project, uh, especially Reza Keshkaran, my, my co-first author, um, and Chaitan Pandaranath, my advisor. Um, also really huge thanks to the collaborators who shared their data as well as um, our other funding sources. Thanks. All right, thank you, Andrew, for that excellent talk. We already have a question for you um, from Adam uh, Willits. So, they're wondering how specialized the innovations of auto LFATs uh, um, are specific to this technique. Uh, do you think other models would benefit from regularization hyperparameter search, uh, specifically the specific uh, forms that you presented here? Yeah, so it's an interesting question. Um, so one of the, the problem with auto LFATs, so auto LFATs is a, a sequential variational autoencoder. Um, so when we when this when the model has enough capacity, it will it will take these spikes that we're feeding as as input and basically put those or output those same spikes or rates that look very similar to those spikes because they'll have high likelihood for the observed data. Um, so coordinated dropout is essentially preventing spikes that were passed to the model at the input from also being uh, back propagated or from the loss being back propagated through those samples at the output. So I think um, a model that uses a negative log likelihood um, and is based on spikes um, could very well benefit from coordinated dropout, um, especially if you're seeing this, this sort of overfitting um, that we were seeing where you know, the model isn't inferring rates based on this dynamical systems constraint, but it's instead just passing um, rates from input to output in sort of an uninformative way. A great response. And we have one more question um, from Cole Hurwitz. Could the overfitting of LFADs be regularized by increasing the KL divergence in the elbow? Um, I think so. I think you're talking about um, the, the KL penalty. Um, so, you know, for autoencoders, um, variational autoencoders, there's, there's a KL penalty, which is sort of a regularization. Um, and yeah, that's what the hyperparameters are actually doing. So when we're adjusting um, these hyperparameters during PBT, it's actually adjusting those penalties um, in sort of an adaptive way.
All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. That was great. We are going to move on to Omid. Cool. Oh.